In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make any logo that you've ever wanted to make into a 3D logo on Blender. If you want to learn how to make this, just stick by. For this tutorial, the main two tools we'll be using are Adobe Illustrator and Blender 3.0. So the first thing I want to do is insert or copy and paste the logo that I want to make 3D in Blender. For this tutorial, I'll be using the Google logo and eventually I'll kind of make it my own, but feel free to use any logo that you would like to use. Because I'm using an existing logo, I'll have to copy the logo. So how I do this is by using the pen tool and tracing the existing Google logo. I like to remove the fill and add a stroke so that I'm able to see what I'm tracing and I'll get a more clean and accurate logo like this. So just do that for every single letter. And because this logo has straight lines and also curves, I'll be going back with the curve tool and then the pen tool to get the best results. Once I was done tracing it, I removed the picture and I added a fill so I could see how my logo or my tracing was doing. And as you can see, the center of the O, the G and the E were filled up, will filled out. Um, so in order to fix, it, fix this, all I have to do is make sure I select the O and then the center of the O and either right click my mouse and select create compound path or in that right panel, I can just go to the pathfinder section and select that second button and it'll do the same thing that creating a compound path will do. So you can stop right here, but because I'm extra, I decided to add some drips to the Google logo. So I did this by selecting the individual letter and then grabbing the pencil tool and just freehanding the drip to it, as you can see here. This is all very trial and error, so I did it to every individual letter, but if you don't like it, just feel free to, you know, control Z to go back to it not being like that. And this was the final result. Now I'm ready to export this so I can edit this in Blender. And the way I do it is by going to File, Export As, and make sure it's an SVG, and then save that to your computer. Once you've opened up Blender, in order to up import the file, you're just going to go to File, Import, and select your SVG. It's super small most of the time, so just highlight everything and then press S on your keyboard to scale it up. Then we're going to rotate its axis, so just highlight everything, press RX90 on your keyboard, and that should give you a better view. And I'm going to add a plane just so you guys can see it better at add mesh plane. So all of the letters are individual, as you can see here. So I want to make it one object by selecting all the letters and then right clicking my mouse and selecting join. Or I can also just press control J. And that should make everything faster. I also want to add an extrusion by going to the object properties panel and going down, scrolling down to geometry and adding an extrusion of my liking. I kind of wanted it thinner than this, so I played around with it. I also decided that I wanted to add an outline um, in the future, not now. So I just copied and pasted that and pressed the little eye icon to hide it just for now. The next step would be to sculpt. So before we even go to sculpt mode, we're going to have to convert this object to a mesh by right clicking our mouse, convert to mesh, and then going to the modifier properties panel and remeshing the object. Um, for this case, I'm using voxel and I'm going with 0 0.004. This number is depending on the size of your object. So play around with it and mind you, your computer might start slowing down. So just test the limits of your computer. You don't have to get it perfect. And I press apply. We're ready to sculpt. So instead of object mode, I'm going to switch to sculpt mode and 
within this mode I'm just gonna go back and forth from the smooth tool to the bulb and the inflate tool um, you can adjust the strength and the radius on the top left and right now I'm using the smooth tool to just go over everything and this as you can see is gonna make everything look a lot better and it's gonna make the edges and the corners smoother specifically for the drip part of the logo I'm gonna go in with the inflate and the bulb tool to just round this out a lot more and actually make it look like it's dripping I'm a lazy artist so I usually don't do the back of things because people are only gonna see the front but I wanted to do it right I guess so I turned it around by going back to object mode and pressing RZ 180 on my keyboard and that should turn it around to the back view and then I'm gonna go back to sculpt mode and do the same thing to the back once I finished that I went back to object mode and pressed RZ negative 180 I think and then that turned it around and now we're ready to add a material we do that by hovering our mouse in between these two sections and sliding over mine has a default shade editor tab already open and I'm just showing you here that I'm going to change to render preview settings it's already in world um, so I'm just gonna go to add environment texture and connect that and I'm gonna add in HDRI and I'm showing you right here that I changed it to a shade editor tab so yeah I'm adding an environment texture um, these are HDRIs I get them at polyhaven.com linked in bio and when you change them they drastically change the look of your object so keep that in mind we can now directly work with the materials so I'm changing from world to object mode and I'm removing the existing material and that should bring up a principal BDSF node and I usually always just start off with Chrome see what I want to do which I do that by sliding the metallic tab to one and the roughness to zero and if your object is super grainy like because you've stretched out the mesh in order to quickly fix this you can just select the object right click and select smooth or out of smooth this is when my designer cap comes on and i decide what else i want to do with the design and i did end up wanting to add the outlines with the different um colors corresponding to the letters like google usually has it uh because i felt like it would make it look better so in that right right most panel i unhid the um object i hid earlier and in order to make this an outline i'm gonna go back to the object data properties panel and in geometry you're gonna scroll down well yeah in geometry um you first want to unfill this and then you're going to scroll down to depth and add some type of depth I, depth i went with 0 0.001 and i slid it to the back now you are going to run into a problem well at least i did because every letter is a different color even though this is one object so that way i fixed this um or the fastest way I know how to fix this is by going to edit mode and then selecting each individual the vertices in each individual letter and then right clicking my mouse and selecting separate selection when I did this to every individual letter I went back to object mode and I made sure I removed the material for each individual letter because it was once all one material so that would change the color for everything and that would defeat the purpose so yeah I changed the colors I forgot what colors Google had so I quickly went back to C and yeah I changed the colors for each individual outline once I had everything positioned how I wanted to, I went back and changed the HDRI because I didn't like the one I had. And you can adjust the brightness where it says background. So the last step before we render is adjusting the camera. So in order to do that, you can just click the little camera icon. If you don't have a camera already, 
just go to add at the very top left top corner and press camera. In order to move the camera with your mouse, you're going to press N on your keyboard and then you're going to go to view and select camera to view. And that way it's a lot easier. You can move your camera around your mouse to the to your um, desired position. And once you've adjusted the camera to your liking, I'm going to quickly switch over from EV to cycles, which is the photorealistic engine, which I prefer and turn on your GPU if you have one because it will make everything faster and I will be using the plane I add at the very beginning the white plane um, as my background for my Google logo so that just worked out perfectly and you can adjust the color by adding a material we are now ready to render so I'm just gonna very quickly change the max um, render rate to 200 because that'll make the rendering a lot faster and I'm going to unselect denoise because I actually like the noise and I'm going to go to the raw to the top left corner press render and then render image and that should render out your image if you're happy with everything you can just save the image by going to image save as that concludes the tutorial if you want to learn how to make this seamless rotation animation with the logo you just created make sure you turn on your post notifications that'll be up in the next video and make sure you like comment subscribe and i'll see you in the next one